Hello, I'm Steve Nugent with Empirical Audio. Our products uh, have started from the beginning primarily as a result of customer requests. We started originally in the modding business, primarily computer playback, uh, but the quality was always less than what they would like to have. So uh, we started by modifying some of these pieces and this grew into and more and more customer requests uh, resulted in more and more products and uh, so we continue to do that and respond to our customers needs. Uh, in our latest offerings uh, range from our off-ramp and freeway products which are USBN and SPDIF digital coax out so you can use your own DAC uh, and drive USB from your laptop or desktop. So our newest product, the Pace Car, is addressing all of these new server devices such as the Sonos which has an iPod like interface on it. Uh, to the squeeze box, there's a new squeeze box that also has a similar kind of interface and the older squeeze box with the remote control this is a squeeze box here, uh, to the Airport Express. Again, our customers came to us and said, you know, we bought one of these things and we, we love the interface, but we're really unhappy with the audio quality. And so we, we've tried to address that again by creating a product called the Pace Car. And <clears throat> throughout this whole process of developing these various products, well, one, our goal has been single-minded for the most part, and that is to reduce jitter. When you're playing digital data back, there's really two elements. The first element being the data itself. You want to keep the data intact. You don't want to have data errors. And the second element is the timing. And likewise, you don't want to have timing errors, which, which is jitter. So. Uh, that's our first uh, order of business is attacking jitter, which, which I believe is the, the, the fundamental flaw in, in most digital playback. Uh, another area that we've, uh, I'm not going to say we pioneered it, uh, but we've created our own standard is I2S. And I2S interfaces uh, appear on a lot of our modified DACs and on our pace car and as well as a version of our off-ramp. Uh, and the reason we do the I2S is because this is the native interface for the D to A chip that's inside the DAC. So what you're doing is you're getting the conversion and the data transfer closer to the DAC chip. The other advantage of I2S is the data and the clocking information is separated, separate signals. And the other key thing to, to talk about too is the things that reduce jitter for these devices start with a clock. Historically we've used super clocks. They're in their fourth generation now, super clock four, and they also offer ultra clock, and we found this, the, the super clock four to be uh, infinitely musical. So sort of two things that are important is putting some kind of reclocking or clocking device as close as possible to the DDA converter, and, and secondly having a really low jitter clock. So uh, back to the pace car. The pace car is a device that we've developed to address jitter for this class of devices. So it, it actually uh, reduces jitter for transports, Airport Express, uh, squeeze box, Sonos, all kinds of Wi-Fi and even non-Wi-Fi devices. And it can be used with uh, any transport that has a word clock in as well. It has a memory buffer and it works in various different ways depending on the device connected to it. Uh, but it essentially stores the data. Jitter coming in is unimportant, but it stores the data in a memory buffer called a FIFO, first in, first out buffer, and then it clocks that out with a high quality low jitter clock. Uh, another product that we have offered for about a year now is the Spoiler DAC. It's our first uh, DAC product. It's a USB tube DAC, and it has also option to put the pace car reclocker inside. And uh, it can be configured in a number of different ways as the pace car can. Uh, this particular one has uh, a pace car circuit for the I2S input, so it gets reclocked 
as well as uh, one for Sonos or Squeezebox. So it allows you to do a wired or a wireless interconnect. And I've always been a proponent of upsampling. And as you can see on this spoiler, it's upsampling to 2496 uh, through USB. And this is one of the reasons why I, I prefer the wired solution now over the wireless is because I can use an upsampler on the computer to, to take native CD tracks, upsample them to 2496 and play it through a DAC that will accept 2496. And the quality is better. Uh, the difference is not only in smoothness, but dynamics, depth, uh, 3D uh, becomes better, uh, a less, less edgy on vocals. So uh, and I've done this demonstration with my own spoiler DAC, switching between um, a Wi-Fi server at 44.1 and USB at 96. And without exception, people prefer the 96. This is not always the case. There's a lot of controversy on the discussion groups about upsampling. And like anything else, it's the devil is in the details. So it's really the upsampler that's used. How is it being upsampled is the, is the question. Does it really make it better? And it really depends on the upsampling algorithm. And the one that, that I've licensed for use with FUBAR and USB interface uh, is, is quite good, is really excellent. And then I've also found the one that Mac uses, uh, their MIDI option upsampler, is also quite excellent. So I've got two wonderful solutions for 20, 2496 using USB. Uh, the component I'm working on right now, which is a very interesting component, is the Formula One DAC. Very excited about it. I'm using a, a lot of technology that I've gathered over the years modding other people's DACs and from my own background. And uh, it has a number of features that are very unique and never been tried uh, in the industry. The volume control on it is totally unique. Uh, nothing like it's ever been tried on a preamp or a DAC before. Our, uh, our product goals in the future are more towards all our own products and doing fewer and fewer mods. And uh, <clears throat> at the same time, we've had a lot of interest from other manufacturers in, in our uh, USB interface in particular. These other companies uh, are interested and they have, um, they're evaluating currently our, uh, uh, an OEM version of our USB interface. So you might see more USB interfaces of ours on other people's products. Soon. I hope so. You know, the other thing we do is our pricing. When we, we market a product, like the spoiler for instance, we don't look at similar products or products that are competing head to head with this uh, and price it uh, to what the market will bear. We, we have our formula for developing our pricing and it, it really has more to do with our costs, what we have in it, and, uh, and, and we're not, not trying to make a killing on these products, we're just trying to give the customer a good value for his money and, and as high a performance as we can uh, design. So that's where we're at right now. So the spoiler, for instance, instead of being a $20,000 DAC is, is a $6,000 DAC. Hmm. And, and it's truly, I feel it's in the class of the $20,000 DAC. So. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Steve. Thank you.